Oh, the Kandiru, Kanduru, whatever. The catfish that swims up the weenie of unfortunate men in the Amazon. You don't ever hear about it from women. I wonder why. Here's the thing about myths and legends. Some of them are easily disproven because we see that they're obviously far-fetched. But some of them are not so easily disproven and seem plausible. So, no one really looks into it. The Kanduru is one of those examples. I believed it growing up. I mean, shoot, it was all over the place. It was on TV. And we're going to talk about some of those instances in this video. There are no credible cases that a Kanduru has ever swam up a male's urethra. The only potential case was in an episode of River Monsters. And we're going to go over that as well. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm about to put my all into this picture. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. There are multiple species of Kanduru. There's not just the one that people think about. There's one that literally like eats. When you think of the scarab in the mummy, that's what this fish does. It's like a mini piranha. And they will burrow into the skin, go underneath it and eat it from the inside. These guys are way more terrifying than the blood-sucking variety. The blood-sucking variety is this one. It's the A, and they are known to attack people. Now, the blood-sucking variety is the one that everyone thinks about. That's the one that supposedly is attracted to urea, which is comes out of the fish's gills, as well as our urine. And it will swim to a fish's gills, grab on, and you know, suck its blood. Or if you're a person, you pee in the water, it'll follow the stream up and go in and stick its little gills in there and just suck the blood out. That's the story. And there are stories where this happens to people. Um, like in this one, uh, in 1941, an article in the American Journal of Surgery relayed the following case of a 13 year old boy. Uh, the fish had entered his pee. And by the time the young Indian had reached the mission, the mission a half hour after the attack, his trousers were saturated with blood. And it was running, uh, uh, it was running over his bare feet. He seemed to be in considerable pain. Mr. Burns, fearing that he might not succeed uh, as Indians do with their huato, huato juice, said that he had no medicine for these such cases. He suggested that they treat the boy according to their own customs and lost no time in uh, sending the Indians for the fruit. Uh, this time, they had to cross the river over one-fourth of a mile wide at this point to get green fruit. There was plenty of ripe fruit at hand, and this is not suitable for the treatment. The men brought the green fruit, prepared it, and gave the boy a good drink, about a pint uh, of the unpalatable medicine. This, of course, could be prepared in varying strengths. The next day, hearing that the boy was very weak from blood loss, uh, Mr. Burns went to the house and was told the fish was dislodged about two hours after the potion was administered. The boy was still suffering from slight hemorrhage uh, and micturition uh, was painful. However, he, com uh, he recovered completely. So stories like that really get people freaking out. The issue is they're just stories. There is no real proof of any of this. And the, the issue is, is that people will be like, well, you know, who's to say that this didn't happen? And you're just a white guy who has privilege. Who blah, 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 blah. All I care about is that there's actual scientific proof for something. You can make a claim all you want, but if you don't have something to back up your claim more than just this is a story, that's not good enough. That's just not good enough. We can pretend like it happened because it's an interesting story, but there's no proof of that. Uh, the Kandiu, uh, as the fish is called, is much dreaded by the natives of the Jura, Jurua district, who, in order to protect themselves, rarely enter the rivers without covering their genitalia by means of a sheath formed of a small coconut shell with a minute perforation to let uh, out urine, maintained a sort of bag of palm fiber suspended uh, from a belt of the same material. The fish is attracted by the urine and when it, uh, when once it made its way into the urethra, cannot be pulled out again owing to the spines that arms its opercles. 
This only means the the only means of preventing it from reaching the bladder, where it causes inflammation, ultimately death, is to instantly amputate the penis. And at Trace Unidos, Dr. Bach had actually examined a man and three boys with amputated penises as a result of the dreadful accident. And here we go with a couple of diagrams of the things that they the natives would use to cover their willies so that um so that the fish wouldn't crawl up it very interesting here's the thing about these stories they're just stories and the reason i say that is because of situations just like this in a review published in the journal of tribal medicine Ermgard Bauer, a researcher at the School of Nursing at James Cook University in Australia, scoured all the scientific literature on the Kandiru uh, he could find, as well as looking up numerous non-scientific materials such as news reports on the web. Bauer found that the first mention of the Kandiru was made by Carl Friedrich, F Carl Friedrich Phillips von Martius, Martius uh, followed by similar reports by others mainly German and French naturalists and explorers. Later reviews were gathered by Gudger, who described the penis and vagina protection devices employed by the natives, who, uh, but who never actually traveled to the Amazon and was only relating second-hand sources. In general, Gudger lists eight eyewitnesses. So the guy who is making the claim talking about that the you know the first person to talk about these instances and the, the drawings and all that never even went to the amazon bauer highlights the alarmist language used by gudger and the other naturalists of his time including writing things like with great violence it forces its way in and desiring to eat the flesh has the habit of entering with great impetuosity and rapidity into the external openings of the human body enter the urethra and rectum chiefly if one while in the water should satisfy nature little animal launches itself out of the water and penetrates the urethra by ascending the length of the liquid column penetrates with eel-like nimbleness into the orifices of bathers and causes many fatal accidents horrible sufferings which the introduction of this living needle may uh, may occasion although bauer found numerous other reports of kandiru attacks in the scientific literature on closer examination the researcher found that in fact these same stories had already been repeated again and again elsewhere so basically there's a bunch of people who claim that these stories happen but they're the same repeat stories told by different people and made it seem like it was everywhere and the people who actually first made these accounts like talked about them in scientific literature weren't actually there they were just second and third hand accounts that is not legit science in any way shape or form and now that brings us to 1997 and the one story that i thought was very credible about this because well it was on river monsters so why wouldn't it be credible Hey guys, post editing Dean here. Um, I went to go upload the video and there was a section where I used the video from River Monsters and um, that's copyright and all that. So I had to trim the actual played part of the video out if you want to go check it out. I left the link for the video in the description below, but I go and explain it anyway. So you're not missing anything, but just letting you know, I can't actually play the River Monsters clip. So enjoy. So his story is that he knew that these fish were there. So he made sure to not put his weenus in the water. He had it out of the water and he was peeing in the water. And the fish jumped up the urine stream and swam up his penis think about that it swam up the stream like a salmon going up the river into the hole and just whew, right up there whew. you're telling me that seems credible that that happened when in any other situation is anything like that even feasible 
it's not. So that video that they just showed just said actual endoscopic footage. It doesn't say of the event. So they didn't use endoscopic footage from the actual surgery. The, the, this doctor is a, a legit doctor and he's your urologist and he, he's got, I don't speak, is it Portuguese, Spanish? I don't know. He do, the point is, is that he is a legit doctor, but it seems, I don't know. It just seems off. I mean, maybe he did actually pull something out of him. The story of how it happened, that's where things get a little weird. It's a very weird story because it doesn't, it doesn't it just seems fishy. I don't know how else to explain it. His story doesn't make much sense. And you know, that's the only somewhat credible account of this actually happening. These are pictures of what they can do to humans though. They can latch onto your body for sure, but that's, that's a big fish. I mean, it's not a big fish, but to go up a urethra, that's, that's a pretty big fish. And as this website is also talking about their, like this happened in 97. Oh, it was in Brazil, so it is Portuguese. You're telling me that not only did it jump up and swim up into his urethra and lodge itself, but there's only a couple of pictures of the fish afterwards. There had to have been something, like you couldn't take a picture of, I, I get it, it's the guy's junk, but like there's no other pictures of the situation doesn't really make much sense. Did it happen? Did it not happen? I don't know, but it seems odd. On top of this, there was a study in 2001 uh, where they tested to see whether Kanduru were actually um, attracted to urea. Turns out they use their sight way more than they use their smell. So as cool as it would be for Kandiru to be these menaces that swim up the pee, there's really nothing besides hearsay, stories that are repeated over and over again, and one story that has some potential to be valid, but half of it's missing a, a believability to it. You're not, I'm sorry, you're not going to convince me that this fish jumped up a pea stream to get, in like the first attempt, it, it shot up the pea stream and went into his pee hole on one attempt and just slipped up in there. I don't see that as a possibility. I don't. And you can get on me in the comment section about it. But as far as I'm concerned, there's basically no proof that this is something that is legit. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down below. And I'll see you on the next one.